What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to add a database to our to-do list app with PyQt5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to add a database to our to-do list app. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, in the last video, we created this handy little to-do list app with PyQt5. In this video, we want to start to add a database. So in the last video, we could, you know, add items to the list. We could cross off items from the list. We could clear the list, but we couldn't save the list to a database. So if we had a big long list and we closed this program and then opened it again, it would disappear. So in this video, we're going to start to add the database functionality so we can save our list to the database. This is great because it's going to show us how to use databases with PyQt5. We haven't talked about that yet, and it's a very common thing. You're really going to need to know databases if you want to do anything, make any sort of real app. So this is going to be a nice little segue into databases. We probably won't finish this in this video. It's going to take us two or three videos to get this all worked out but we'll definitely get this started in this video. All right, so I've got our code from the last video. We're using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code for this video in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist that has all the other PyQt5 videos in this series. So we've got our to-do py file. And if we run this thing again, you'll see in the last video, this is as far as we got. We got three buttons and our list and our entry box here. So what we want to do is add another button. And that means we're going to have to open the designer back up and add another button. We could try and do it manually, but it's a pain in the butt. We're just going to use the designer for this. The bad part about this is it's going to destroy all of the code that we did in the last video to make these buttons and stuff work. So we're going to have to do some copying and pasting from the last video. It's going to take a little bit of work. It should only take a few minutes, but that's what we're going to start out doing. So let's head back over to our terminal. I'm in my C PyQt5 directory. I've got a virtual environment turned on. And let's just run the designer. And here we can open the file that we worked on in the last video. So go to our PyQt5 directory and find that to do.ui file. And this is the file that we were working on. So to make a change, we just make a change. So I'm going to make this a little bigger. Come over here, find a button, kind of drop this in resize this guy, move it over a bit, resize it some more. And then let's name this thing uh, save db underscore push button. There we go. And then let's come down here and find the text and change this to save to database. And when we do that, we can see, okay, that looks pretty good. So let's come through here and sort of resize all these other things. Make it look nice. Okay, so that's really all there is to this. Maybe we want to make this a little bigger, smaller. There we go. So now we need to save this and convert it to a Python file like we did in the last video, but I don't want to save this with the same name because it's going to override what we did earlier. So instead, I'm going to come up here and go file, save as, and instead of naming this to do, let's name it to do two, right? So we'll have a separate one there. So, okay, that's all we need to do there. Now we need to convert this into a Python file. So pi uic5 x, and this is to do two dot ui. We want a dash o to output it to, and let's go ahead and name this to do two dot pi. So that way we have both our old to do dot pi file and our new to do dot pi file. And if we run this guy, Python to do two dot pi, we see, okay, it looks pretty good, but you'll notice none of these buttons work anymore because we've overwritten it with this new file, right? So let's see if we can fix that. We've got our old to do that pi file. Let's go ahead and open up our new one. So that's going to be to do two and get rid of all this stuff as we always do. And just come through here and we're just going to have to copy and paste all the stuff we did in the last video, which is kind of a pain and kind of stupid. And if this was a bigger app, we would have done this differently, but it's a little app. So it, this is how we're doing it. And this is just sort of annoying and we're just going to have to do it. So let's go down here to these functions that we, we made in the last video and let's just copy them all. So let's do that. And it's going to be right above the retranslate UI function. So let's come over to our to do to file, find that section right there. And above here, just paste all this stuff in. Okay. So that's most of the stuff that we needed, right? 
But now we have to come up here to the top and find all of these little things that we that we added here, the function. So we need to put them, and there's three or four of them here. So add item push button. So come over here, come up to the top, look for the add item push button. There it is. Paste that in there. And then come down to the next one, which is this guy. So that's this is the delete it. So let's sort of come over here, look for the delete it guy. There it is. And paste that in. Uh, one more, I think. Yeah, clear it. So let's copy this. And again, let's just sort of come down here, find the clear all one. There it is. And paste that in. So let's go ahead and save this, run it, make sure that's all correct. And that's really all we have to do to copy stuff over. So that wasn't too bad. Uh, so let's run this guy. So I could just go one, add item, two, add item, three, four. Whoops, that's, let's delete that guy. Let's put a three. Okay, that looks good. Clear all the items. Okay, so everything works here. Now this save to database button doesn't yet work. So that's what we need to look at now. So I'm just gonna copy this and let's find that new button, that save database button. And here it is, save database push button, QT widgets. So let's come to the end of this and paste this in. But instead of clear it, let's call this save it. All right, so now we need to come down here and create a function for the save it stuff. And here's our add it, here's our delete it, here's our clear it. So underneath here, or really anywhere, let's go save to the database. So let's define save underscore it. I wanna pass in self. And for now, let's just pass. So, okay. So the first thing we need to sort of wrap our brains around before we even start talking about the database is how do we get the stuff out of the list box itself, out of the list widget? Right? Each item in our to-do list, how do we get that out of there and then do something with it? Because eventually we're going to pull the stuff out of the list and then put that into a database. But in order to put it into a database, we have to pull it out of the list. So how do we do that? Well, let's create a dictionary and I'm going to call it items. And that's just going to be a blank dictionary. So let's say create blank dictionary to hold to do items, right? Now we just want to append all of the items from our list view, our list widget into this dictionary. So how do we do that? Well, let's do a quick loop. So let's say loop through the list widget and pull out each item, right? So let's do a loop. So let's go four and we want to pull out the index in a range, right? So Think of the items in the list box as numbered items. And we need to know how many numbers are there because we're going to pull out the first one, then the second one, then the third one. If there are 10 things, we need to know there's 10 things in our list. If there's two things in the list, we need to know there's two things. So to do that, we just kind of pull out the range of those numbers and then loop through them each one at a time and do something with them. So let's go for index in range. And this is going to be self. What do we want to range through? What do we want to loop through? We want to loop through are my under are my list underscore list widget, which is, you know, just this thing right here. And then what do we want to do? Well, we want to count and see how many numbers, how many items are in the list box. So this will give us basically the number of items in the list box in the list widget. And then this will, you know, loop through those items. So if there's 10 items, this will say, hey, there's 10. And then this will loop through it 10 times, basically. And every time we do that, we need our colon here. What do we want to do? Well, we want to append them to this Python dictionary. So that's items dot append. And this is just pure Python. Anytime you want to append something to a list, I've been calling this a dictionary, haven't I? Oh man, this is a, a list, right? So the brackets mean list. So Python list, anytime you want to append something to a list, you could just call the, the name of the thing items and then call dot append. So what do we want to append onto there? Well, we want to append self dot my list underscore list widget dot item. And which item? Well, whatever item we're currently looping through. So that's going to be index, right? So if there are 10 items, this will say, hey, there's 10 items in your list. And then when we loop through the first time, this will be index number one. When we loop through the second time, this will be index number two. And think of index numbers as the row numbers in the list, right? So 
th what this does is this will append each row one at a time to our items. And then later on, we can do anything we want to this list. We can append it to the database. We can do anything we want. So uh, let's just see that instead of setting up the database, because that's going to take a few minutes, let's just make sure we've got this. So we can print items. Now this is going to look weird and you'll see why in just a second. So we're going to have to fiddle with this a little bit, but I want to at least show you first what it looks like in its raw form. So let's head back over here. Let's run this guy. And I'm just going to create uh, item one, add this item two, add this and then three. And now if we save this to the database, nothing seems to have happened. But if we close this, it prints out that Python list, right? You can see there's our brackets. But look what it printed these objects. There's one, there's two, and there's three weird looking objects. These are definitely objects. So it says object right there. That's not that useful to us. We don't need the object. We want the actual thing itself. So how do we get that? Well, instead of items, we can do items.txt. But even that's not great. Uh, that's a function. So we need our bracket guys there. So but let's look and see what this does. It's a little better here. So uh, let's go item one, add item to the list, item two. And then let's say pizza just to mix it up a little bit. <laughs> Boom, uh oh, we get an error list has an object text. So what we need to actually do is loop through that list and then for each one dot text them, right? So almost there. So let's go for item in items, we want to loop through here. And then we want to print out this will be item not items. Make sure our indentation is correct. Okay, so now this will loop through this weird object list and convert the objects into actual text and then print those items. So all right, let's go ahead and save this Let's run this guy one more time that should do the trick. So let's go item one, boom, item two, boom, pizza, <laughs> right? And then save to database. Did I do it? Yep. And then now it's printing them to the terminal print item one, item two and pizza. And there we go. So all right, we're getting there. Now we haven't done actually any database stuff yet in this video, but we did all the preliminary stuff that we have to do before we can sort of connect to the database. I think we'll do that in the next video. But now we've got our app set up, we've got a button that we can press that to save stuff. And then we've got the functionality to where we can loop through our list, our list widget, and grab all the items out of it and then put them in this Python list, not a dictionary. Man, I don't know what I was doing there. Dictionary, definitely a Python list. And then once they're in the list, remember, they're added as objects. So we're pulling out objects from the list widget, not the items themselves. So if you want the items themselves, you have to loop through this list and uh, uh, print out dot text for each one. And we've done dot text stuff before here, we set the text, there we go right here dot text. So you know, we're sort of familiar with that already. And that's what it's just doing It's converting those objects to the text and printing them out. Now, all we have to do now is sort of have a database set up. And instead of printing these to the screen, we'll save them to the database one at a time, right? And that's pretty easy. I've done lots of SQL stuff in the past, we want to look at past uh, probably Kinter videos has SQLite, I've got a whole SQLite uh, playlist, we're going to use SQLite, you could easily use MySQL as well, maybe we'll use MySQL as well, if people are interested, but the database is almost irrelevant, it doesn't really matter what database you use, uh, sort of the, the functionality is going to be the same of doing, you know, adding things and pulling things out for the most part with a little bit of tweaks. So okay, I think we're going to cut this off. This one's getting a little bit long in the next video, we'll go ahead and add in all the database stuff shouldn't take us very long. It's pretty simple stuff. This is really is the hardest part sort of adding sort of grabbing the stuff out of the list widget, which wasn't hard at all. Uh, so that's fun. So that's all for this video. If you like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codeme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. So pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeme.com and I'll see you in the next video.